Way to go, yeah. Yes, at one point. Every so often you come across a person like Debbie Ramos' trainer, a woman of deep faith and determination. I just feel I have been so blessed that I'm not meant to keep these blessings to myself. A woman who flat out defied the odds stacked against her. A woman whose story you probably don't know, but should. You come from such a humble background. You end up, you know, at one of the higher levels at the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, in an incredibly important position. You could never have imagined that. Never. It's just so unbelievable the experience that I've had, the things that I've been able to do, the things that I've not only been able to do, but been responsible for. So Debbie, not keeping it to herself, has written a book with the curious but appropriate title, Tortillas to Astronauts. Tortillas, she regrets, she never learned from her grandmother how to make. How does that happen? My mother did not like to cook, and so we always got there after things were already made. I still honestly, to this day, I have not had a tortilla as good as my grandmother's <laughs> tortillas. The book is her story, her journey of perseverance. She retired from NASA a decade ago after 29 years, starting as a secretary and ending in a pivotal position, training astronauts for flight. So I have to take it up the hangar, Joe. Debbie grew up in Pasadena, Texas, near Houston, in a modest Mexican-American home. Smart and headstrong, she overcame every obstacle in her way. She went to Catholic grade school, St. Pius. She was a class president for three years. Then she decided on public high school, and in the early 1980s got a lesson she never expected. For you, it was totally different when you got to high school than what you had experienced in grade school. I had no idea though that I would not be able to do some of the thing, same things I had done when I was at St. Pius, which was, you know, being able to participate in the, because I was class president for my sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And, you know, try, right off the bat, try, I knew I wasn't gonna win in that first year because I was from a small school, but, I thought, I'll just get my name out there, just get to know people. But when the administration just flat out told me I couldn't run, it made no sense to me. And I was a you know, straight A student. They told me it was a, a, they were concerned about my grades. It was discrimination is what it was. I mean, Mexican, Mexican American, I mean, right. call it what it was. But then I tried to sign up for French and never got French and I just and I like I, I obviously don't know but I'm just kind of imagine somebody in administration saying well why does a Mexican girl need to know how to speak French and then I shared an office with a French astronaut. What Debbie wanted as much as anything in high school was to be on the dance team. That was a big deal. That dream had to come true. Right off the bat yeah they told me when I was talking to those Mexican-American friends that you know, I was, that's where I'm supposed to be now. I, I want to be, you know, part of the Texans. I came from Catholic school, but I want to be on that drill, on that dance team. And they were, ah, oh, yeah, that's never going to happen. Like, what? Why? Because you're Mexican. But you were determined, and you ultimately... I did. Right? Yes, I did. You weren't going to let, I mean, you basically said, uh-uh, mm -hmm. it's not happening to me. Right, right. Making the team required a summer of practice after her freshman year. Like the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, it's all about the kicks and everything. <laughs> so I just made sure I, you know, stretched and, you know, got as flexible as I could be. I could get those kicks up. My name is Debbie Trainer. These days, Debbie spends considerable time speaking with school kids about how they can define their own futures. It's never enough time with them, she says, but it's important to pay it forward. Some may be like her, the first in their family to go to college. You just make sure within the class, everyone is participating, that everyone has a voice. There were lessons along the way that I learned that I feel I can share 
And the little 20 minutes that I get to speak to these is, is not, it's just not enough to cover the things like, how do you handle going through the college days when you have no one in your family to support you and maybe or maybe not there's someone in the school administration that can help you. I came to the realization very early on after high school that if I want to be able to have um, financial stability for myself and help my family in the process then I need something beyond a high school degree. Joining the Texas Air National Guard ultimately helped pay for college and gave her the thrill ride of her life. This is you here in the uh, in the F4, F4 Phantom, right? Right, right. Is that not a cool helmet? She got to fly in the wings over Houston Air Show because she had again overachieved during training and was an honor graduate. But that F-4 uh, flight for you had to be just like, oh, oh my, my goodness. Oh my goodness, yes. So, I mean, right from the beginning, you know, we take off and I'm looking out of the canopy and there's just three perfectly aligned F-4s. I mean, it was just so amazing looking up. I could not believe it. And then, boom, we go up and then I'm like, oh my goodness. Gosh, they are so close. <laughs> oh you started at NASA as a secretary. I did. What gave you the idea, first of all, to, to go work at NASA? I just really got the NASA bug of, you know, curiosity of what all was uh, happening at NASA and just got my foot in the door as a secretary. And, and I happened to be a secretary in an engineering branch and it was the very beginning of Space Station. And the Johnson Space Center, JSC, was right there in Houston. All the astronauts flying on space shuttles or preparing for missions to the space station trained in Houston. But here, here you are, you know, again, go back to the fact, I mean, you, you opened your own doors. Mexican-American girl, in high school they're telling, the counselors aren't even bothering to tell you what to do or where, what your options are for your future, right. but you're opening your own doors. I made the decision in that engineering branch through the help of my engineering friends that basically encouraged me to go to college. And we have liftoff, liftoff of the Space Shuttle Endeavor on an ambitious mission to service the Hubble Space Telescope. And it paid off. Debbie worked part-time at NASA while pursuing a degree in computer science, then switched to mathematics. In 1993, eight years after first starting at NASA, she began working for the space flight training team. Her job, teach astronauts and mission controllers how to use the computer system for the space station. Space flight training specialist, right? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? What do you do? They look at what training is necessary for an astronaut to be successful, not only for themselves, but as a team. She spent a year in Star City, Russia with her family as training coordinator and manager for the first crew to live aboard the station called Expedition One some 24 years ago. The amount of specialized training like spacewalks for space station crews far exceeded space shuttle requirements. Debbie was in charge of making sure they got it. So with Space Station and the build of Space Station, every single flight was going to have multiple EVAs and multiple robotics. Because you're building it. Because we're building it. Retired astronaut Mike Foreman flew twice to the station and performed five EVAs, commonly known as spacewalks. Chief astronaut, Charlie Precourt was chief astronaut at that time, brought her in and she and he said, hey Debbie, we are in a world of hurt here. We need, we got all these crews that we need to fly. We need to build this thing called the space station. And Debbie Trainer was the person that was actually had the forethought to see, and Charlie Precourt knew he needed somebody like this to look out and say, okay, hey, if we wait until Mike is assigned to this mission and then start training him, we're not gonna have the time to do all this training. Franklin Chang Diaz, uh, I worked with him in the astronaut office. Tra and, for, and training for, because he flew like seven times. Oh yes. 
with this. As we talked and looked through her memory books, you couldn't help but notice the bracelet she wears with a space shuttle and an astronaut charm. A good friend of mine, um, Chris Hadfield, yeah. uh, he took my little astronaut with him to uh, on one of his flights. So my astronaut has actually flown in space with Chris Hadfield. The Canadian astronaut. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. so. That is a very cool story. Every page in her memory book is a time capsule of NASA history and reminds her of another story. These are great, though. Uh, yes, they look. John Young, yes. Bob Crippen. That was their 10th anniversary of, yeah, first flight of Columbia. Wow. Right. Yep, That's Crippen really and great. Young. Mm -hmm. These, I mean, to the giants of the space shuttle exactly, program right there. Exactly, exactly. One time there was a presenter and somebody was asking a bunch of, you know, very direct, very it, it just stern questions. And the conference table is where all the managers were, where you would normally get those types of very direct, you need to know, blah, 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 you know, all this stuff. And after about the third time, I finally I said, who is that? Because it wasn't somebody that would be a manager role, you know? And I said, that's John Young. And I was like, oh. Ah. Houston is now controlling. By the way, John Young also commanded Apollo 16 and walked on the moon. But the highlight of perhaps her entire career came during that stay in Russia. And it had a whole lot more to do with tortillas than space. We did actually have the opportunity to serve tortillas to Tom Hanks in Russia. The rest of that story, Debbie says, will be in her next book. Coincidentally, tortillas happen to be a staple on board the space station because unlike bread, they don't leave crumbs. It always seems to come back to the tortillas.